name is Michaela Thomas, and welcome to Kids Biz, where knowledge is power, and Kids Biz is live talk radio. I am here with Miss Terry Neal from Science Alive in Waterford, Michigan. Hello, Miss Terry. Uh, good morning. Good morning. So, what did you bring here? We have a uh, giant South American marine toad, and she is a female. They're bigger than the males, but then it's all about having more eggs, bigger females, the males do all the singing. The girls just listen to the best singer. Ah, and what are those giant circles near her eye? Right behind the eye is an ear. They have the eardrum right there. Her mm -hmm. eyes definitely perked up above the head so she can keep basically above all the substrate and pop up, look around, see what's out there. They can hide right into the forest floor. Being in the rainforest of South America, they're dealing with a lot of uh, you know, hiding as a predator, but hiding also as the prey. There are animals that would like to eat a toad. Not all animals will eat a toad. These big puffy pads up here, they're to make her taste terrible to a mammal that would want to bite her. So they're gonna make her definitely one of those bad tasting things to say, hey, spit me out. So, don't bite toads. <laughs> but handling one, not a problem. Many things you can do. You can feel if you'd like, check out that nice, smooth yet bumpy kind of skin. Being that they live further away from the water as an adult, they will need a thicker skin than most frogs. So, hmm. frog versus toad, more terrestrial, more land loving, versus the frog more aquatic or water loving. They all have to go back to the water to lay their eggs. But the toads will live further out, further away from the water, and then have a thicker skin to make them a little bit less uh, um, able to evaporate too much water. I have a glove on because they drink water through their skin. The thinner skin of the belly um, makes it more what we call permeable, or water soaks up through it. The glove keeps her from actually absorbing any chemicals that would be on my hand, even things I make, which is sweat, body oils, and things too let alone anything else, from hand creams to anything else. Um, but yes, the glove is there to keep her safe from me. I'm the poisonous one to her, mm -hmm. as an amphibian. She says, I'm gonna go back to those trees back there. <laughs> Can she blink? Yes, if you watch her eyes, the eyes have actually three eyelids to them because they are more into the water at times. But yes, when they go down, the eye goes down, lower lid pops up, there's a third lid coming across, but they will blink to clear their eye. And yeah, when they sleep, their eye goes down and actually uh -huh. helps to push food down her throat while swallowing. But of course, what does she eat? Anything that fits in that mouth. You can see she's got a good size mm -hmm. to her. She can eat things as small as the crickets and little roaches or beetles, larvae of different things. She'll also eat things as big as a mouse um, and anything else other um, lizards or anything else that would be running around on the forest floor. So when she devours, does she have like teeth, like teeth, ah. like we do? Sharp yeah, teeth. they're not going to chew their food. What goes down has to go down in one piece. That tongue does zap out, not a very long tongue. It's only a few inches long, but when it zaps, she can jump forward at it and then actually pull it in and then um, gulp it down, push it down its throat while it's blinking or pushing it down with the eyeballs. So. Yeah, no chewing. There's no teeth. On a toad, they actually have a smoother jawbone than what most frogs do. The frogs will actually have a more serrated or bumpier jaw, some even more pronounced um, in some species of frogs. But yeah, they have no chewing capability. When the toad eats a mouse, how does it, well, how does it disappear out of her stomach? Ah, well, there's an out hole back here, too. It will go through the digestive process like anything else. Um, but yeah, no, they do have a, actually a stronger digestive juices um, that will help to break down even the bones. The fur is not, um, if it eats a fledgling bird that falls out of the nest, they can zap that up. They will see things that move, so their eyes are more motion detecting eyes. So they'll zap that tongue out, wipe off any debris that's stuck to the animal, and then swallow it down. Um, but yeah, the bones are digested, uh, strong enough stomach acids to dissolve the bone, but the fur or feather will not. And even the exoskeleton of the insects that they eat and other invertebrates, they will not uh, 
uh, be digestible either. Okay. But it comes out pretty good. You get a good toast to a lot of it. Okay, I think we're ready for the next animal. Thank you. How about a good kiss goodbye? <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> She also brought a chinchilla. Ah, yes, this is Puff. Puff is actually one of my eight year old chinchillas. Uh, normally they live only about five to six years in the wild, but in captivity with people, they actually have lived over 20 years. So he's oh. still a youngster yet. What is your oldest chinchilla? Ah, uh, we've got one that is uh, about 18 years old right now. So, yes, we've got some younger ones, but definitely. One of our oldest, we have a 17 and an 18 year old. They have different colors too. Mm. Normally they should be a, a standard gray. This is kind of grayish um, in a way, yes. Uh, but the normal standard gray has more black tipping to the hair coat, just making them well camouflaged and not just a solid color. But uh, being out at night, um, they are found actually down into the Andes Mountains of South America, where the toad is found in the the basically into the Amazon rainforest. These are desert animals, but they require a cold desert. The Andes Mountains uh, over in Chile. Um, but it's definitely designed for that uh, cold w weather. Check out the fluff. They have 80 hairs per root. Hi, buddy. Little Aww. baby puff, as we always call him. He's so soft. The tail, of course, is a little bit different. If you mm -hmm. study that and notice how the whiskers are very much wiggling, they right. move the air to his nose to better smell a lot of things that are going on. The smells of every room that we go into, since we go right into individual classrooms, they will have their own unique smell. And these are just <laughs> what they call wobbling. They'll actually move that air right to his nose to better smell um, anything in his world. Focusing with his ears, his eyes, even that nose. Just like you and I. Cheerio? Nah, not today. <laughs> but. So, are those his treats, basically? Well, that's some of the things that he may want to eat. Sometimes he does, sometimes he does not. But like I said, he's always got a, a very curious mind. These guys are just as, I guess, independent in their thoughts as, as what you and I would do um, in your likes and dislikes. So, some will go for the Cheerio. Some of them will just, um, you know, have other treats that we can feed them as well. But their main diet is all made of plants. So you're talking about a grass hay, they get a pelleted diet, um, like the guinea pigs and uh, others of their, um, of their similar family. They're, they are uh, what we call cavies. That's the group of rodents that they're in. But they're born with their hair on, eyes open, ready to go at birth, soon uh -huh. after. So they're quite a unique little guy to work with. What? We've got a number of them. What other colors are there besides, you know, the gray that you've been talking about? Uh, um, they can go all the way from white to, uh, to black. Um, they go from all ebony, from top to bottom. This guy has the white belly, which a lot of them in the wild would have anyway. Um, but definitely, uh, yeah, we've got them all white, the albinos to, um, well, now they even have some variety in length of coat and, and some of them with a curly coat. I don't have any mm. of those, but mm. they have some diversity in them because people have been breeding them for now a little over 100 years. Wow. for that fur as well. They're not great house pets because they have a long lifespan with humans over 20 years, but uh, definitely you're looking at an animal that's uh, eh, hyper, bounce off the wall kind of kid that really likes to uh, um, 
play a lot at nighttime. How many animals did you bring here? I do have five different animals with me today. So from the amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, we have a number of different things at our, at our uh, disposal to work with throughout any of the schools that we do. But I've got a few of them today. Well, thank you, Mr. Chinchilla. Mm. Love the fluff. <laughs> the hairy armadillo. Yes, this is Atlas. Atlas is actually, yeah, the greater hairy armadillo. These are found down in South America as well, but not a native of the United States whatsoever. Um, these are further south. And so this is one of the 20 or so kinds, species of <laughs> armadillos. It's a very active one, but he's just coming up to his second birthday, the end of the month. But he does like to eat a wide variety of things. Huh. We were just feeding him. Let's take a look at some of the things. Now, he'll eat insects. That's one of the major things that he likes to eat. Here, he also likes to eat uh, sticks of sweet potato and other fruits and stuff, too. So he has a pegged tooth on the sides of their, of their jaw line there. So he will actually take bites of it and uh, chew it right up. But check out the armor. Feel how that hard armor which is made of the same thing as your fingernails. Aww. From his head, his ears, his legs, Hi, right on down to his tail. So when you look at this oh, one, yeah. he's not going to curl into a ball. That's one of the an another species of armadillos. But this is an animal that stays flat and will walk about in the forest underneath the vegetation, staying pretty fast, run, run, run. But laying flat on the ground, jaguar's not going to catch you very well if the claws cannot penetrate through that armor. But he feels this, even though it's a you know, harder, particular kind of uh, skin, the keratin. <laughs> but he does follow his nose. That's what they like to do. He does not have the twitching whiskers of a chinchilla, right. but he has, if you look across his face, many hairs along the face, underneath to even up on top. Very tactile in that way, too. But he eats well. His mouth is wide open. Right. But he likes to stay down on the ground, loves to run around. Um, put him on the floor, he'd be underneath and all around everywhere. But definitely they have a uh, higher speed come nighttime, and they do run. Oh, he's going to pick up a big crumb he has <laughs> left on the ground on the table there. What do you think his average speed is on the ground? Like, I know you said he runs fast, but like... Well, they won't outrun a lot of his predators. Um, the jaguar is going to be able to have that uh, advantage of speed, but he has that of size, smaller, being able to fit underneath a, more of a scratchy vegetation, so he's right. not going to be able to uh, have a uh, great way of, uh, you know, being chased. Right. Uh, the, the bigger cat, is definitely not going to be able to follow him and uh, go right underneath the plants and stuff too. So his size, his armor plating, keeping him safe from the plants them themselves because they're pretty tough sticks and, and vegetation that are down on the ground. He'll go underground to eat the ants and the termites, um, but he can eat other things too. I mean, as we are feeding him some of the different uh, vegetables, I have a whole lineup of things here. <laughs> but yes, he's getting more active as he starts to wake up. Being more nocturnal, too, he is definitely uh, much more active then and takes a good long nap at times during the day. Oh. So when he wakes up from that nap, does he normally just 
charge all around his cage, you know, like habitat. Yeah, I give him little areas in which he can actually find food, mm -hmm. rip it open out of a box or whatever. I have some <laughs> extra cardboard boxes and um, he'll definitely just have fun just digging through it to get to his, his uh, little morsels of food. So I'll hide some of the frozen crickets and stuff in there and uh, give him something to forage for um, the foods, giving him something to dig at, to, to move about and run around. So yeah, he has uh, yeah things to dig at, like me. <laughs> so yeah, holding him, he just gives me nice, uh, good digging rib rubs, I guess. But you can see Aww. the hands are much longer than his feet. Aww. But that's Atlas. Atlas, okay. our hairy armadillo. Thank you for showing him to us. Ah, uh, yes. He's very active. He's waking up. <laughs> <laughs>
it's just a concoction of many insectivore kind of foods and um, different vitamins that we know that they get um, in the wild from those ants. Mm -hmm. And some of them like uh, hot and spicy ants, like the red ants and other oh. things too that are a little different. So there's different species of ants to eat and they're ranging from a wide variety of uh, ants that are also available to them. Ah, that's so cute. So you can see that tail is a major portion of the length of the animal. And she's going to get mm. around maybe 9, 10 pounds. So she's still just a youngster here, liking to climb all over the place. Right. What do you think, girl? So you can see if she goes down, the tail, the feet. Uh-huh. Very nosy about everything in here, too. But she'd climb throughout a lot of the area in here, too. Aww. She's very attached to you. <laughs> Physically, yes, <laughs> as well as emotional. That's the thing. You put in your time with your kids. Aww, hi. Very different hairstyle. <laughs> and those hands, that can have that good power grip. Aww. She looks very tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I do keep her nice and warm because the climate here in Michigan changes from one season to another and so I adapt my works with all of the different animals to keep her warm I have heaters that go into her carrier that way she's going to stay in a nice temperature when I'm uh, caring for her on the road thank you yeah. for coming on the show little flower Aww. And she doesn't have any teeth even. You couldn't get your finger in her mouth at all. Aww. Compare that to the chinchilla. They have big front teeth. They are <laughs> rodents. They love to chew on many things. <laughs> um, but definitely these are not bad at all. Very mild-mannered. But the claws, that is the work to defend herself. She can stand right up and does that stand up with the hands. Come at me, jaguar. Dare you to come at me. <laughs> and she'll have a power grip on that animal quicker than that animal came at her. They'll think otherwise to do it. <laughs> it's not armor like the armadillo, but it is the, the force of the arm that is strong. Oh, wow. Lots of good forearm there. The muscle for digging, but also as a weapon. But that's how they have to stay alive. They're small. They can go up right. in the trees. There are snakes that can eat them. There are the caiman in the water that can eat them as well as the bigger snakes down on the ground. And of course, all of the uh, bigger cats and jungle dogs of the Aww. rainforest. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love you, too, golden Burmese python. A particular color mutation that occurs naturally but uh, would not ever usually survive in the wild because lack of the colors would not help it to uh, really <laughs> you know, hide like some of the other animals that we've already taken a look at. The pattern is there, the darker pigments are not. So is he like an albino snake? Yes, you can say albino, or what they also refer to as a melanistic, but it's the melanin that is lacking, so the carrot or keratin colors are actually still visible. So yeah, it has the lighter eyes. You can see the pinkness through a lot of the areas where they don't have the pigments there, even on its tongue. As it sticks out to smell us, you can also see the heat-sensing pits, which Burmese pythons will have. Some snakes, of course, do not have them, but they require generally the interest of uh, mammal or bird as their main prey, rather than just other snakes, lizards, mm -hmm. um, any other types of uh, animals that they would normally eat. These generally eat the mammals and birds. 
but they get oh. bigger. This is just a, what, a couple of years old, and it's only a little over, what, eight foot long, and it's gonna get over 20 feet long, potentially. Being a male, he's not oh. gonna be as big as the females. Uh, females like it with the toad, they get bigger. Um, the older they are, the more eggs they potentially can have for that species. And they wow. are found in the rainforest of Southeast Asia, over in the country of Burma and surrounding areas. So, do they, how do they know that you're gonna treat them well? It's working with them when they're small because they come out of the egg thinking everything in their world is potentially food or mm -hmm. well, they are the food to them. Mm -hmm. So these are hunters of, the other, of other animals, but yet they are hunted as well. So they can come out of the egg thinking something that's bigger than them could potentially eat them. So they can strike out to you know, keep themselves safe. Um, so working with them in a mild manner, these will accept it being handled because you put in the time with them. Some species of snakes would never work well, and at Science Alive we have actually uh, close to 30 snakes, and none of them are venomous, but they're different species from the Burmese pythons, which are our biggest kinds, as well as some of the smaller ones that are from whether sand boas or some of the common corn snakes to milk snakes and things that never outgrow us. But we have other species of pythons that will never outgrow us, and they'll get over 10 to uh, maybe uh, you know, nine to 10 feet for some of the other species. Mm -hmm. These get bulky and will you know, be down on the forest floor. Um, but definitely, they're an easy one to work with. That's what I like about the Burmese pythons. They're so docile, easy going. I kind of refer to them as being the uh, Labrador retriever of the, uh, of the snake world. <laughs> easy and mild mannered. But yeah, putting in the time, that's what you need to do to be able to you know, get this to be easy going. Sure, it's got 100 teeth in its mouth, but it doesn't have, um, and you wonder where are they all put in. It's looking at the anatomy and seeing how the structure really works with these guys. They have you know, multiple rows of teeth and sharp and pointed and curved back. No fangs, just a grab because they are a constrictor. They have to hang onto them, catch the food, and then quickly coil around them. So this body that we're feeling here is really quite well, dense and heavy, but it's the muscle, and muscle weighs a lot more than just the fat. So they don't carry much of an ounce of fat on them. The muscles definitely are going to be something that's going to be important um, mm. in the constriction of their food. When he's nervous, can you tell? Uh, they're curious, but you know, I've got my hands all around them and he's not showing much on a nervousness at all. Um, when I you know, use and work with them when they're young, they're pretty easy going, but they have a, you know, behavior that can show a little bit. <coughs> but yeah, this is an animal that uh, is pretty mild-mannered. So is it because of the skin pigment that his skin <coughs> looks so shiny? Yeah, when you take a look, it'll be shiny anyway, but it's the smoothness of the scale. Right. Feel that smoothness. Hi, buddy. <laughs> now, there's some scales. <coughs> some of the reptiles will have a more rougher scale. Even the snakes do. And that snake will have a, what we would call a keeled scale, a line down the center. Excuse me. And uh, when you're looking at this one, it doesn't have it. And as you've got the reflection of the light, very good on that shine, which kind of gives you the, excuse me, the illusion of being wet. And it isn't. So it has that nice shine um, because of the texture of the scales. And these will shed their skin. This one just recently shed. Every seven or so weeks, they right, will shed their skin. Grows. They are going to outgrow it. They're going to wear it out. Um, so the belly, longer scales underneath, allowing them to use them more for traction. So you'll see that they lift up much easier than those along the top. But then you can see that's how they're moving. <coughs> these have uh, 400 vertebrae bones of the spine and then you wow. also have close to seven to eight hundred ribs and that's what he's moving when you feel that movement of the body just that slow almost a magical movement wow do you do birthday parties besides you know like 
go out to other events besides schools? Yes, show? our main focus is in the school. So we go right into the uh, classrooms and, and so in our presentations, it's a small groups kind of thing. And so the birthday parties and even uh, senior citizen homes, we do a lot of those engagements as well. Um, but yeah, we, we do a lot of things, libraries in the summertime. So it's a, you know, it's a whole year round kind of business for Science Alive. We, uh, yeah. our main focus throughout the school year is definitely in the schools, um, along with the birthday parties and the libraries and the park and rec programs. We'll do some things outside as well as inside, depending on we weather permitting as well. But generally, it's the smaller group kind of uh, presentation. So they have always a hands-on approach of studying them as well. If people were to talk to you about their animal or get you to come to a special event, how would they contact? Well, our phone number is always available, which is uh, 248, we, you know, um, 738 uh, You can also reach us on through our website, which is sciencealiveanimals.com. Also, we have Facebook, and you can always uh, reach us through there, too. So phone number works, so does all the other avenues. So, yeah, we're here in Waterford, so, um, but we pack up and we travel throughout the whole state of Michigan. Mm. Enough schools and enough venues to keep us busy enough uh, throughout the year. What positive message can you give the kids of today? Uh, find something you really are passionate about and uh, go for it. I've always been interested in uh, animals, so growing up with them, um, never expected to get into this, but you know, your focus may change, but still keep looking for something that really motivates you into, uh, you know, your love, your passion of what you like to do. I'd like to thank you for being on my show today. Uh, thank you very much for inviting and me. I've been your host for Kids Biz Live Talk Radio and Kids Biz Where Knowledge, Knowledge is Power. power. What do, do you, you want to be when you grow up? up?